1948 war is that it is the most important, longest, bloodiest war in Israel's history. It's so complicated with so many different things that, that happen in it that, you know, we should spend time talking about when did it start, what happened, what were the different stages. Um, and if we can understand the beginning of the 1948 war, it really starts um, with the UN vote in Kaftet for November, 29th of November 1947. The uh, British had had enough of the whole craziness of Palestine with all the conflict between the Jews and the Arabs. They said, we're out of here. They turned it over to the UN and the UN comes up with the partition plan. And that an amazing moment over there in Lake Success, New York, there's that vote and the, well, the whole of the uh, international community uh, accepts the fact that the Jewish people can have a homeland in the land of Israel, their own state in the land of Israel. And um, the response by the Jewish community, right, was joy, celebration. Listen to how Amos Oz describes it in his memoir, Tale of Love and Darkness. Um, listen how he describes the street party. A few hours later at 7 o'clock, what? Then there was dancing and weeping in Amos Street, in the whole of Karen Abraham, and all the Jewish neighborhoods. Flags appeared and slogans written on strips of cloth, car horns blared and raised banner high to Zion. And here the land of fathers, uh, shofar blast sounded from all the synagogues and Torah scrolls were taken out of the holy arks and were caught up in the dancing. And later in the small hours of the morning, Mr. Auster suddenly opened his shop and all the kiosks in Sefania Street and Gaula Street and Chancellor Street and the Jaffa Road and King George Avenue opened the bars, opened up all the city and handed out soft drinks and snacks and even alcoholic drinks until the first light of dawn, bottles of fruit drink, beer and wine passed from hand to hand and from mouth to mouth. Strangers hugged each other in the streets and kissed each other with tears and startled English policemen were also dragged into the circles of dancers and softened by the cans and with cans of beer and sweet liqueurs and frenzied revelers climbed up on British armoured cars and waved the flag of the state that had not been established yet. But tonight, over there in Lake Success, it had, it had been decided that it had the right to be established. And it will be established 167 days and nights later, on Friday the 14th of May 1948. And listen to what Amos Oz says happens next. The great, there's this great party, but then comes a but. But one in every hundred men, women, old folk, children and babies in those crowds of Jews who were dancing, reveling, drinking and weeping full of joy, fully 1% of the excited people who spilt out onto the streets that night would die in the war that the Arabs started within seven hours of the General Assembly's decision and late success. The war starts exactly seven hours later. Um, and part of that war is about this road. Right here. Show me a country whose width is 10 feet wide. <laughs> That's what we said about the road that we see right down below. And how did we get to the point where a road that's 10 feet wide is the width of our country? How does that even happen? So seven hours after Amoso's, you know, dances in the streets and see, sees his sees his friends and his loved ones after, you know, years, 2,000 years, you know, this collective history and memory of trying to create a Jewish state. Seven hours later, a bus is taken over by a gang, you could say. And a war starts. And the war at its first part, until May 14th, 1948, is really a civil war. Because the people who are controlling this land are the British mandate. And when the British control this land before they leave, um, a war between the two civil populations living here begins. The Arab population of Palestine and the Jewish population of Palestine. We still do not have a state of Israel. The state of Israel is six months ahead. And what happened was this. Groups of small fighters would fight each other, and it would be going kind of back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And one day, one of the I would one of the, the military leader of the Palestinian people at the time, um, Abdel Kader Husseini, realizes something. He says, "If you want to kill an old person, 
You don't have to go into his room and bring a gun and... No, all you have to do is unplug one tube. If you stop the food and the water from getting to this person, you don't have to do anything else. That tube for the Jewish people was this road. What's this road? This road is... It's called now, it's road number one, okay? The road itself was the only road that Jews could take to get into Jerusalem. Now, why is that so important? Because if you look at the numbers for a second, the numbers are only important when you have a context for them. There was 600,000 Jews living in the land of Israel at the time. 100,000 of them lived in Jerusalem, meaning a sixth of the Jewish population lived over there through the mountains in Jerusalem. And the only way to reach those Jews living in Jerusalem was to take the 10 foot wide road leading from the area of Tel Aviv up to Jerusalem. But the problem was, what were you passing on your way there? And so we're sitting here on what looks like, you know, just a, a couple of, of hilltops. But in 1948, these hills were all Palestinian villages. And on these hilltops would be sitting small groups of, of Palestinians, you know, sitting here with the, with the twigs and the olives and then with maybe their sheep. And the minute a, any sort of vehicle that was part of the Jewish forces would drive up towards, through the mountains, to Jerusalem, okay? A call would go out, a scream would go out, and all the different groups sitting on these hilltops would see each other, and they would go and they would either, they would block the road, wait for the Jewish uh, driver to come out and attack him, or they would just straight up attack the vehicle itself. Which is what led to the name of this point in the road, Shar Hagai the gate of the valley, because the minute you start climbing up this valley towards Jerusalem, you had to pass this gate. And I think Ben-Gurion realized this, the same as the Palestinians. Um, and he realized that in, if we're going to have a state of Israel, there's no such thing as Zionism without Zion. We have to have Jerusalem as a key part to our state. But then he realized we can't have Jerusalem without the road to Jerusalem, right? Um, uh, so we need, to get, we need to get the road to get Jer Jerusalem. But then they realized we can't have the road without the hill. So comes along Ben-Gurion and says, you know what, we're going to have to capture the hills to get the road to get Yerushalayim so that we can have a state. So should we go capture the hills? Let's go.